Welcome to AgriBaltic, the program that projects the significance of biotechnology to agricultural development in Nigeria. I am Lara Afolayun. Nigeria is gradually moving towards the commercialization of genetically modified seeds and indigenous seed companies and dealers are an important part of this process. These seed dealers have already been enlightened on this class of seeds and according to promoters of biotechnology in Nigeria, this is to enable them effectively multiply and distribute the seeds. On today's edition of the program, we shall be looking at how the seed companies are being educated on these seeds. The Director General of the Nigerian Agricultural Seeds Council, Dr. Ulusha Gunjo, will also be about chatting with me on this issue and more. But for now, let's take a look at some trend in agricultural biotechnology stories on what's new. Researchers in West Africa have stepped up efforts to contain a viral disease that could wreck the region's stable foods and cause hunger for millions. The cassava brown streak disease, CBSD, is a virus that strikes cassava which in some of the region's countries is consumed by as many as 80% of the population. The root rotten disease was first discovered in Tanzania eight decades ago and is steadily moving westward. Researchers say it is a very big threat that has to be taken very seriously. They add that outbreaks in Central Africa have wiped out between 90 and 100 percent of cassava production and is now heading towards West Africa. The West African Virus Epidemiology Wave Project, a multi-million dollar scheme funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, aims to shield the region from the advancing Danger. The project, which has its headquarters in Ivory Coast Economic Capital Abidjan, involves six West African countries, including Benin, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and Togo, as well as the Democratic Republic of Congo. The CSBD virus is believed to be spread by an insect called the silver leaf white fly and also through cottons taken from infected plants. Togo will receive technical support from the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IIT, under the African Agricultural Transformation Technologies, AATT, initiative. In furtherance to actualizing this objective, a delegation of the institute based in Abuja, which works with partners to improve crop quality and production and reduce risks for producers and consumers, have already visited the country. The visit enabled the IIT delegation to take stock of the cassava sector in Togo, chosen between 35 countries, to serve as a program starting point. The AATT initiative aims to implement action that can speed up the agricultural transformation in Africa through higher productivity of rice, cassava, millet, sorghum, groundnuts, cowpea, livestock, corn, soya, yam, cocoa, coffee, cashew nuts, palm oil, horticultural products, beans, wheat, and fish. This is expected to generate nearly 513 million tons of additional food and lift nearly 250 million Africans out of poverty by the year 2025. President of the International Seed Federation, Jean-Christophe Quash, says innovations in plant breeding are enabling the development plans that meet the needs of a changing world. He was speaking at the ISF World Seed Congress in Australia. The Seed Federation president says unlocking potentials of genetic resources to produce more with less is a fantastic mission of the seed industry over the coming decades. He adds that in previous decades it was enough to use genetic power to boost the efficiency of agriculture, but increasingly there is a need to anticipate the role and the impact of products to ensure that farming systems are more resilient and more sustainable than ever before, as the power of genetics can deliver on both efficiency and sustainability. More than 1,200 delegates from 64 countries 
discussed, debated, and collaborated on the opportunities and challenges facing the global seed industry at the Congress. Highlights of the Seed Congress included a roundtable on the future face of the seed sector and a panel discussion on the international standard on phytosanitary measures. The National Biotechnology Development Agency, as well as the Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology OFAP, has continued to sensitize Nigerian seed dealers on the genetic modification technology. The indigenous seed dealers are being educated on the science behind the technology, safety, as well as how they can participate in the development of these seeds locally. This is to enable them actively play their role in the genetically modified seeds business. Many developing countries like Nigeria cannot feed themselves owing to low productivity, a situation occasioned largely by pests and diseases. In the cultivation of cowpea, popularly known as beans, for example, the cowpea borer disease remains an age-long threat to yields. But an end is now in sight for this disease, as genetically modified pest and disease-resistant cowpea varieties have been developed. What scientists are doing in Nigeria or all over the world in terms of modifying crops to give us new and better varieties is in a safe manner. We are doing what nature has always done. Nigerian seed companies are now being enlightened on proper use of the seeds before their commercialization. We want the seed companies in Nigeria to be involved, to be in charge of this. Because the technology, it's, it's, there's justice in it, it's about justice. So that our own farmers would have access to these seeds. The essence of this is to allow indigenous seed dealers equal opportunities in the distribution process, thereby preventing a monopoly by international seed firms. This partnership, synergy and collaboration are required in the areas of monitoring, human, institutional and capacity building development, and as well as private sector and farmers buy in. This will ensure that Everyone is properly educated and well informed on what modern BT and GMCs is all about. If the sea country is given the necessary empowerment to implement these stages for enhancing the proper handling of traded GMCs as enumerated, then Nigeria stands a better chance to benefit from the technology. On our part, we shall launch out for negotiation, networking and collaboration for capacity building of our members. And we shall kickstart by exploring what is available and accessible.
This is coming ahead of the commercial release of the BT cowpea and BT cotton varieties. Farm management trials of these inputs are currently ongoing in several states across the country. The Nigerian Agricultural Seeds Council is responsible for the development and regulation of the Nigerian seed industry. The agency is, among other things, charged with the responsibility of researching on seed-related issues, registration, release, production, marketing, distribution, certification, quality control, supply and use of seeds in Nigeria, as well as their importation and exportation. Next. The agency's Director General, Dr. Olusha Gunjo, bow chats with me on the agency's role in the commercialization of genetically modified seeds in the country. And joining me on the program is Dr. Olusha Gunjo. He is the Director General of Nigeria's National Agricultural Seed Council. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. What is the role of the Seed Council in Nigeria's adaptation of biotechnology for agriculture? Well, National Agriculture Council, an agency of the Federal Agriculture, has a responsibility to regulate the seed industry generally. So that is whatever we know, whichever aspect of seed, the council has the responsibility of regulating and coordinating the industry. That is the responsibility of the Seed Council. What role do the council play in the use of genetically modified seeds in the confined field trials across the country? Uh, the role of the seed council is to continue to monitor along with members of the variety release committee. Our staff do follow them to look at actually what is happening in those places so that at the end of the day when varieties will be released, they will have informed knowledge about what is happening. And what have been the findings of your staff? from this activity so far? And data have been collected and those data will be collected and sent to the variety release by the, by the, by the, comi by the group that's actually doing the monitoring. So that is as far as that is concerned. How much has the council done ahead of the seeds commercialization in Nigeria? Well, what the council is doing is that of capacity building of its staff. Uh, because as a regulator, particularly to ensure that qualities are made available to farmers, we must actually understand what 
the whole process is all about, and that's exactly what we are doing. Uh, 20 of our staff have been sent to Biosecondary Development Agency. 20 of our staff have been sent there for some training. But you know, training is actually a continuous process. This is a, an area that is very new, and training has to be continuous. Thing. And that's exactly what we are doing. Also, the council has what you call an in-house biosafety uh, 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 committee that looks around issues of biosafety. Because we want to be sure that whatever that is going to go to farmers, you know, meet all the standards and they are safe. When are we looking to see the seeds circulation in Nigeria? First of all, the varieties have to be released. They have to be passed to the variety release committee who will evaluate and release and register it. When they are released and registered, now then the private sector will have to pick the seeds, particularly the breeder, and multiply into foundation and certify seed. And that is the first certify seed that will now be made available to farmers for commercial production. What is the relevance of the Variety Release Committee in this process? Ah, it's, the Variety Release Committee is so significant because any variety that is not released and registered cannot be used in any country, particularly in Nigeria. So they must pass through that process uh, compulsorily because that it is the regulation. And for us in National Agriculture Council, any variety that is not released and registered, we cannot even regulate it in terms of ensuring uh, the quality. So it is one of the conditions that varieties that will pass through the uh, process must be released and registered. What is the composition of the Variety Release Committee like? Uh, it comprises of uh, stakeholders in the industry, the council, the research institute, uh, the farmers organizations, seed companies, and many other people uh, are actually part of the Variety Release uh, Committee. What efforts will be deployed to ensure that this process is not abused? And what controls will be put in place to ensure that we do not see unapproved seeds in circulation? The Council have uh, a department called Seed Inspectorate Department that regulates the activities of seed dealers and seed producers, particularly in the marketplace. Uh, it is their responsibility to educate the people to ensure that it is only seeds from approved sources that are allowed to go into the market. And also, if they are adulterated seeds, they go out there to either raid the market and ensure that it is only seeds that are passed the process that meet all the minimum standards, both the uh, field and the laboratory standards that are allowed in the market. That is what the council does in ensuring that it is only seeds that meet this uh, process that are allowed in the market. When will the seeds likely be commercialized in Nigeria? Ah, uh, for commercialization, it has to the the the, the, the uh, process of confirmed fish trials will be completed, and the data collected and sent to variety release committee. When they are now uh, released and registered, it is only then that it can go into the market. How soon will this commercialization process likely be? From all indication. Well, I think uh, as soon as the, uh, the, the process is completed, it goes to the market. But it must, as a matter of procedure, pass through this process. The variety release to be released and registered. And see companies who now pick it up for production. And it's only then that it can go to the market. What lessons is the council learning from economies like South Africa that have adapted this technology for agriculture a long time ago? The lesson we are learning is uh, that of uh, comparing notes and looking at what they are doing and the way they are doing it. And particularly since they started a long time, we will take, we we'll look at them and see exactly what are the good things we can take from their process and actually adapt it to our own environment. I think that is the lesson, the big lesson I think we are learning. What is your final word in this issue? Uh, whatever we want to do, we must do it right. Pass through the procedure, ensure that all the processes are completed. Particularly for us in the council, we have a seed policy 
I want to ensure that everything that has to be done must be in accordance with the provisions of the Nigerian seed policy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that was Dr. Ulushegun Ujo. He is the Director General of Nigeria's National Agricultural Seed Council, speaking on the role the council will play in the commercialization of GM seeds in Nigeria. We'll take a quick break and the program will continue shortly. Do stay with us. And this brings us to the end of today's edition of the program. Keep the emails coming. The email address as shown on your screen is agribaltech1 at yahoo.com. Send us tweets at agribaltech13 or comment on our Facebook page, agribaltech and TVC. I am Lara Afolayan. Bye-bye.